Um, hey, Rob, what can you tell us about Zach Evans? Uh, you know, Zach is uh, Zach's been working his butt off on uh, there, giving the defense a uh, a great look on the on, on the scout team, and he's been uh, he's been recognized by uh, by Sean in a couple of meetings of you know just the way the guy's been running. You know, and he even said it before this game happened, um, you know, when your opportunity comes, you're going to be ready to go just by the way you're working. So I think it's been uh, it's been shown. And, you know, he's, uh, you know, he's a young guy. He's hungry, uh, you know, following uh, Kyron and Ronnie's lead. You know, I think, you know, having those leaders in the room is is, it, it is awesome for him. And so, you know, we're excited to see what he's got. And then um, you you have. uh sort of been, a, 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 I guess, a teaching presence or a mentor presence a few times over the last couple of years, um, as, including two young running backs when they come in. The Rams have have drafted a lot of young guys over the last couple of years. Um, what is that like for a lineman to also help bring the running backs along in, in the entire plan for the run game? Yeah, no, it's just kind of having the, uh, you know, the marriage of the run game and especially in the pass game, making sure everyone's on point. I mean, we had a uh, just a little example. We had one, a call in practice that we haven't talked about this year, but, you know, obviously, you know, a lot of us uh, uh, old linemen have been around for a while. So we kind of threw out a call where we didn't actually. The running backs didn't know what it meant. And so and then we kind of had to explain the origins of what, you know, what that call was just so we don't tip to what we're doing to the defense. But it's um it's 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 all about having that communication and having having a connected team and and those young guys you know they do such a great job of you know wanting to learn and hearing how we feel like how we feel our blocks are going to go how we feel like where this running lane is what the play is designed to do and then just have, you know being instinctual runners and then you know because you may want a play to go a certain way and then all of a sudden defense presents itself and you know guy sees a cut and takes it. And that's one thing I, you know, I, I never want to take away from, from running backs. Like I'll never tell you where to run. Cause I, you know, obviously I've never done it, never going to do it. Don't want to do it, but it's, you know, it's kind of one of those things that's, this is where we think it's supposed to go. And then you just play ball after that because the, you know, and, and, and those guys do such a good job of, of, un, of understanding where we are, where we're going, where we're targeted, who's free, and that's just having, you know, that that ultimate communication and it just helps us be better. Did you that call you guys work through and practice? Did you run it in the game? Um, yes, but the call didn't come out the way it did in practice. It was a it was a different look. So we actually just stuck with the the, the previous call just because we didn't have to hide anything. OK, thank you. Yeah, thanks, Jordan. Go ahead, Stu. Hey, Rob, um, I guess it's one thing to see and, and feel that performance as far as an offensive line and, and a collective run game in real time. But from the perspective of, I guess, watching film the next day, is there anything different that you, or anything else I should say that you noticed about um, you know, that performance and what's the Yeah, no, I think one thing that was, you know, on on display was just the toughness of Tyler Higby. I mean, like kind of like I mentioned a little bit after the game of he's just, you know, you know, Sean said it today. He, you know, he's, he's a glue guy to this team. He's an, you know, he's a captain. He's a, he's a big part of, you know, why we were successful yesterday. The guy's just, you know, and, it, you know, it's not like he's catching, you know, eight, nine, 10, 10 balls and, you know, going for, you know, 200, but the stuff he does and the stuff he put on film is just what he's been doing for years and years. And so it's just a, uh, you know, it was awesome to see him, but it's, you know, you don't expect anything different from the way he works, you know, the stuff he, you know, he grinds through and just the way he goes about his business and leads this team. So it's, you know, we're very, very fortunate to have a Tyler Higby on our team. And then when you're playing alongside Kevin Dotson, obviously he's been the starting lineup. What do you, what do you notice about him and the way he plays at right guard, whether that be in real time or again, even after, you know, watching the tape? Yeah, no, I mean, if you've ever seen Kevin, you know, without shoulder pads on, you know, his chest sticks out about, you know, about four feet. So, you know, he's, you know, he, he he's a big dude. He's a strong dude. And just, you know, me and him kind of getting, uh, getting together about how we want to fit blocks and how he wants to hit them, how I want to hit them. And then where's that happy marriage in between, you know? Um, but, you know, he obviously, you know, Kevin brings a bunch of strength, you know, he's played, he's played in a bunch of games, so he's got experience, you know, so it's, it's been uh, it's been fun having uh, you know Kate out in there and you know getting to know him as a person as well. You know he's a you know heck of a guy, so it's uh, it's been fun so far. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Stu.
go ahead. Uh, I'm not sure who's first, Adam or Gary, but we'll say uh, Adam right now. Appreciate it, Rob. Um, you just kind of building off of what you were talking about with Jordan, like when you know that you have a running back with a certain style in the backfield, does that change at all? Like how as a line you block? Um, everyone's going to run a little bit differently. Um, but we all are doing it to our offensive scheme. So, um, I, you know, I kind of remember in years past with like, you know, uh, the way Todd uh, Gurley wanted to run, it was, uh, you know, the, what he was, what he excelled at and then, you know, some cuts that he didn't like. So we obviously understood that and we wanted to give him all the stuff that he loved doing and he was really good at doing. And, and I think that carries over now, but, you know, I, I think our, our, with our running back room being, you know, young is that the, those guys are still learning and still adding mm -hmm. tools to the repertoire. And so there's, they're still, they're still learning you know, what they're good at, what they're great at. And then, you know, maybe some things that they need work on that it, you know, it's not necessarily what they don't like. It's just, you know, they need work on it just with everything that we're doing as an offensive line, you know, you know, making sure we're hitting things the right way. And so we're just making sure we're on our P's and Q's about, you know, presenting the best possible read for them and just make it clear. And, um, you know, I think there were some excellent runs that Kyron had, you know, making, you know, double cuts down the field and, you know, the, just the way he explodes through the line, you know, it was a, it was a heck of a game for Kyron. Thank you. Yep. Thanks, Adam. Go ahead, Gary. It's going to be muted. Muted, Gary. Love what everyone's laughing about it. Yep. No, it's, I, I got nothing. Not any. Oh, there you go. Okay. Gotcha. I'll have to do it with the headphones and pull them out, man. It's week to week. Hey, so first of all, you don't think you'd be hey, Gary, a pretty... you're, you're kind of low, man. Can't hear you that well. <laughs> I got you. I'll listen. Uh, let me see if I can. You don't think you'd be a pretty imposing uh, short yardage back? <laughs> Absolutely not. It's going to take me four days to get to the line of scrimmage. By then, everyone's going to be disengaged. Don't want that. You know, I don't. I don't want people falling on my knees anyway. So I definitely don't want people hitting them on purpose. So I'm. I'm good on that, Gary. And then, um, you, you know, you talk about Zach Evans. What have you seen from um, Royce Freeman uh, when in practices and whatnot? Yeah, you know, Royce is uh, – Royce is I'm, I'm honestly, you know, kind of similar. You know, obviously, you know, Royce has a little more experience, um, but he is – you know, he's a guy who who sees the field very well. He brings a, uh, you know, a physicality in, into the line, and that's something that, you know, as, as an offensive line, uh, you love and, you know, the run game and everything like that. But – you no, know, I thought he's he's done an excellent job. So, uh, you know, so far it's just happened to be that Zach was uh, uh, highlighted by Sean previous mm -hmm. this week. So that's kind of why I brought that up. Sure. Okay. Well, thanks very much. Appreciate yep. it. Thanks, Gary. Sarah. <laughs> hey. Um. Now that you've gotten through six weeks of the season, is there anything about this offense that maybe has surprised you? Um. Uh, no, because we're still kind of you know six weeks in. You know, we we. We think we have an identity, but, you know, kind of what we've talked about, you know, we haven't played a complete game yet. So that's something we're still building towards and we're still building towards, you know, what we want to do really well and how we want to do it um, and play that complete game. Um, but I've never been a guy to go ahead and, you know, set expectations for what an offense is supposed to do in the, in the, in the, the preseason stuff. Cause it's, I mean, you don't know till you get out there. Um, so to answer your question, you know, I'm, am I surprised? No, but just because I've seen the way that, you know, guys come to practice, they bring the energy, they bring the juice, you know, they're intentional in meetings. Guys are asking questions. I'm getting running backs, asking me questions, tight ends, asking me questions. And, you know, I'm asking them, you know, them the same question, like, Hey, what did you feel here? What did you feel that? So I've seen the work, uh, put in. So we're still, uh, you know, we're still building. How would you describe that offensive identity? Hmm. Uh, well, just specifically in that second half, you know, I thought we were a physical, uh, physical group got, you know, everyone was running hard. Um, and that can just, uh, kind of set up, uh, you know, everything we want to do, do in the offense, but it's, uh, you know, starting with a, uh, you know, a physical presence up front and, you know, that continues to our uh, wide receivers blocking, uh, running backs, finishing plays. Obviously I've talked about the tight ends. Um, but it's a, uh, you know, I think if we could start things with, you know, a good physical presence.
Thank you. Yeah, thanks, Sarah. Jordan? Hey, this is a teaching question, and um, forgive me if it's a little elementary as well, but when you have a left-handed center as opposed to a right-handed center, um, what changes in terms of the communication cadence? I, I, I asked because I noticed Kevin flipping his head back the way that the left guard used to do when Brian was a center. That's why I was wondering, is there anything that changes in terms of the, the hierarchy of communication along the line? No, luckily, uh, hand, you know, handedness doesn't have anything to do with which way they can turn their head. But, uh, you know, we've uh, we've done in the past where the right guard with uh, has done it with Brian um, when he was playing center. Uh, uh, last year, we did left guard, uh, switched it. But most of the time, it's, been, it's just been the right guard. So it kind of doesn't have anything to do with, I guess, the handedness of the center, um, to, you know, to answer your question. Is there anything that does change, though, when when it's a lefty snapper? You're asking an offensive tackle, so uh, I'm going to be a little, uh, little unknowledgeable on that. But uh, you know, this it's it's definitely different for a quarterback, just having a right-handed center to a left-handed center. Like I said, in my running back experience, I have zero quarterback experience, um, so you're going to have to ask the uh, you know the captain on that one. But it's a uh, you know, I know there is a difference because we you know we kind of laugh and joke about it. You know, kind of being a left-handed center, you're kind of like the you know the unicorn in the world, but it's a uh, I wouldn't be able to tell you actually what that feels like or what it means. So 